Mina-san, not Karina san Last time I covered two of the four Nijigasaki subunits. And because four is a nice round number, well, actually it's not at all, but it is an even number, so I decided to split them into two videos. Since one video for each seemed too short and all four in one would be too long. Also, as I said last time, when I did the Mew subunits, I covered them all together and I covered them all at once. So in each specific year, I mentioned all the songs that all three groups did. This time, I'm just going to do each individually. Alright? Cool. Let's get into it. So just like last time, I should start with March of 2019. Nine different combinations of girls were offered to be chosen from. As you can see here, we now know that the fifth one down was chosen. Pretty sure I accidentally said it was the fourth one down last time. But no, it's the fifth one. The E configuration. If you look at the B configuration, I think Kasumi and Rina as a duo could have led to some really cutesy music. Or at the very bottom, Emma and Kanata as a duo could have had a very gentle feel to it. Even more than Quartz already has. But anyway, back to it. In May, the unit compositions were revealed and fans were asked to submit names for them. A couple weeks later, the choices for the unit names were shown. Then in June, the chosen unit names were revealed. I am going to start with Azuna. This group consists of three members. Ayumu Uehara, played by Aguri Onishi, the leader of all of Nijigasaki. Shizuku Osaka, portrayed by Kawe Maeda, the shortest performer in the whole franchise. And Setsuna Yuki, formerly portrayed by Tomori Kusanoki and currently portrayed by Koko Hayashi who both won Best New Actress at the 13th Sega Awards in 2019. Their unit color is also apparently Italian red. Don't know how that's different from any other red, but go off, Italia. Also due to the image presented by the group, many of the new submissions had meanings that emphasizes the hardworking, passionate, and dream-filled personalities of its members. The name Azuna comes from the syllables of the names of its members, and in the same order too. A is the beginning of Ayumu, Zu is the middle of Shizuku, and Na is the ending of Setsuna. This is also just a female given name in Japan. Don't think it's too common though, I've never actually seen someone with a name Azuna. I've definitely seen some characters named Asuna, but not with a Z. Anyway, as for their career, February of 2020 was their debut, having their first live appearance at Nijigasaki's Second Life, performing the songs Dreamland Dreamworld and Cheer For You that came out earlier in the year. About a year after those songs released in 2021 was their song Akaku Shiaji, being released with volume 2 of the first season's Blu-ray. A few months later in volume 5 of the Blu-ray was their song Happy Nyan Days. Absolute banger because it's a cat song. And shoutouts to their New Year's version that they did last year. Not to be outdone though, still in 2021 was their second single Maze Town, my personal favorite. Very Halloween themed, though it came out in the summer. And was coupled with Folklore Kaki no Uta. And I totally didn't forget about the Unit Live Family Tour, as in the show being up third, the last show of 2021 being titled The Night Before. 2022 was season 2 of the Nijigasaki anime, which focused on the subunits. Azuna gave us their song, Infinity Our Wings. And when the CD came out, it came with Poker Face and Onagai Fairy. That's one song, by the way. When the anime came out on Blu-ray, Volume 3 had Azuna's Romance no Nakade. Finally, at the end of the year, was their third and most recent single to this day, Blue, coupled with Dancing in Light. But as for lives, during Niji's fourth, they did a song on day one and two on day two. Though Tomori didn't perform with them due to her joint pains. She was there, just not doing any dancing. A similar situation for Niji's fifth live, the girls performing two songs on all four days. Though Tomori was only singing and not really moving around that much. And to follow that up, sadly towards the end of the year, Love Live staff posted that Tomori would be stepping down as Setsuna Yuki in March of 2023. Then in 2023 was the Azuna Lagoon Show, their first full solo live, and the final performance of Tomori as Setsuna. Not too long after this show, we got the reveal that Koko Hayashi would be taking over the role of Setsuna. And then Azuna was the only subunit to perform at the Nijitabi Fan Meet Tour, only doing one song during the Tokyo Show, for both days and the evening show. Since this was Koko's debut, it seemed only right to show her off as an Azuna member as well. As for Niji's most recent 6th live show, the 2024 Yokohama show, Azuna performed on both days, doing their happy Nyan Nyan song but changing it to be a New Year's version, with everyone else joining them for the last few seconds of the song. And a few months ago was the Love Lab Unit Koshian where Azuna performed on both days. As always, two songs on each day. Outside of Love Live, I'm pretty sure the only other festival they've been at was the Bandai Namco Fest in 2022 on day one. Funny enough, they were there with the other group that I'll be talking about in just a little bit. But before that, here are the other submissions for the group's name. In the last video, I was praising how cool Diver Diva sounded and how perfect Quartz was as a unit name. And I am once again about to praise, as Azuna is literally perfect, the fact that the syllables are in the members' names and in the right order. Whoever submitted this has a big, big brain. 
The only other names that really stand out to me are Dreamgirls and Shoujo. No reason in particular, they just sound good to me. And I guess they focus on these girls just being really girly. Some facts about this AU, Kauri is the shortest in the whole franchise, but also the oldest in the unit. While Aguri is the tallest, and Tomori was the youngest when she was a member, now with Koko, she is also the youngest, even younger than Tomori, actually being the only Nijigaku member not born in the 90s. Koko's age is much closer to the Liela girls, honestly. All of these Seiyu are in different agencies, from different prefectures, and as for birthdays, Aguri and Koko are both born in May. Aguri is first though, like literally the first of the month, and just in case you're wondering, Kaori is in late April and Tomori is in late December. Also, as I said earlier, a really cool fact, Tomori and the lady who took over her role, Coco, both won the same Seiyu Award in the same year. Outside of Love Live, Tomori was also a performer in Revy Starlight, Project Sakai, and 8-Beat Story. Though since her stepping down from Setsuna, she hasn't performed with any of these franchises either. However, she still has the voice roles. Coco is the drummer from My Go over in the Bang Dream franchise, and a former member of Seiyu unit Run Girls Run. Aguri used to be in the Seiyu unit Prima Porta with other Niji girls, but left a few years back. She is still currently in a different Seiyu unit known as SPR5. Then Kaori is not in a Seiyu unit or any other idol group technically, but she is a live performer in the Pretty Derby franchise. Asuna was the first subunit whose name is submitted from someone outside of Japan, and in lore, they were the third and final Niji Gisaki unit to assemble. Formed by Ayumu after being jealous of how other people were praising Diver Diva, and she wanted to prove that she can challenge herself too. Mostly just getting jealous of her best friend praising other people and wanting to show that she is cool too. Although Shizuku and Setsuna initially didn't want to be part of the unit because they both felt they were better as solo idols, Ayumu won them over by coming up with the idea of the unit's theme being based around a theme park, which I guess later would be called Azuna Land. Now onto the characters, Setsuna is the shortest but also the oldest, while Ayumu is the tallest and Shizuku is the youngest. Setsuna is actually using a stage name with her real name being Nana Nakagawa. She was the leader and founder of the original group that disbanded before the main story began. When she saw school idols for the first time, it felt like fate was calling out to her. Setsuna actually became somewhat of an urban legend among the students at Nijigasaki, with many claiming they had never even seen her at the school. This of course is due to the fact that Setsuna was actually the alter ego of Nana, the student council president. She is a massive nerd, loving anime, games, and manga. The name Setsuna Yuki actually comes from the names of the main characters from her favorite light novel, with Setsuna being the girl and Yuki being the boy. There's actually so much info on her, but I'll end off with her remembering every single student's name at Nijigasaki Academy. Impressive. I'm pretty good with names too. Ayumu is marketed as the leader of Nijigasaki, though they are mostly solo acts. She is kind, cheerful, and friendly, but a bit shy and tends to be a bit clumsy. Also described as an ordinary girl with no exceptional talents, being content with just living a normal high school life. But when she sees Setsuna Yuki performing for the first time, something inside of her just changed. Ayumu is very protective of her childhood best friend. This usually leads to jealous glances when you interacts or praises other girls. Something the Seiyu portray as well in a very fun way. The character is also shown to understand some English when she was able to understand an email sent by a fan from the UK. And lastly, she's a fan of Pokemon. Like the character, not the Seiyu. I mean, I'm sure Aguri likes Pokemon too, but it's always funny to see the Love Live characters interacting with our real world media. Now for the little cutie Shizuku, earlier I said that Setsuna created the original Idol Club before our current story started, and Shizuku was actually one of the members of the group. And even before that, she attended a different school, Seiren High School. And uh, for a first year, that's quite a lot of backstory that only happened in one year. I'd imagine the first trimester was at Seiren, and the second trimester was the first Idol Club. And then the current story is in the third trimester. Anyway, she lives in the city of Kamakura, which is apparently very far away from her school. She's an only child and has a golden retriever named Ophelia. She is also very athletic, but bad at all ball sports. Instead, using that talent in stage plays. She is sweet, polite, level-headed, and a mature honor student, considered a traditional Japanese beauty, but is also quite timid at times. And honestly, if I didn't specify I was talking about the character, you could have mistaken this description for her seiyu, aside from the whole honor student thing. As for the final thing about her, the final fact of this group, Shizuku has a strong affinity for the real-life actress Audrey Hepburn. One of her songs is even themed around her wanting to be like Audrey, and the song is titled Audrey. Oh, one more bonus thing. Shoutouts to the Niju Shuffle Festival when she sang Rina songs and even had her own Shizu-chan board. Absolutely love it. So, the next group, the last of the Nijigasaki units, Rebirth. This unit also has three members. 
Shioriko Mufune, portrayed by the performing legend Moika Koizumi, Mia Taylor, played by the Australian beauty Shu Uchida, and Lanzu Zong, played by the Chinese goddess Akina Homoto. Their unit color is a Tanzanite, which is actually a gemstone similar to a sapphire. As with the other units, this group was formed in phases, though they debuted a little bit later than the other three. In July of 2021, a form was opened to submit names for the unit. Later in the same month, the choices for the unit names were revealed, and in September, the chosen unit name was revealed. As always, due to the image presented by the group, many of the name submissions had meanings that emphasizes them being a trio and starting off as antagonistic-like figures, before of course befriending them and joining their club. For the name that won, Rebirth comes from all three of the girls rediscovering why they love music and what it means to be an idol, also becoming even stronger than who they were previously. Still in 2021 was their debut with the song Monster Girls, honestly still their best song in my opinion, and rather than one coupling song, this one had three, a single for each of the members. In 2022, they had their debut in Season 2 of the anime, which of course focused on the subunits, but their unit didn't actually form. Instead, the three girls just had solo songs. But when the Blu-ray came out, Volume 4 had their song Look At Me, another absolute banger. And on the very same day, their second single Vroom Vroom, along with Bumble Over, was released. They had their live-action debut at their family tour titled First Delight, being the last group to have their show and being the only one to perform in 2022. Well, for the family tour, I mean, as just a month later, Nijigasaki's fourth live happened where they performed Monster Girls on both days. A really cool fact about this live is that day two was actually Moika's birthday. On to 2023, their most recent track is Feel Alive, and they were actually the first subunit to have a full solo show, kicking off the subunit tour with their show Rebirth Revolution, which is one of my all-time favorite lives by the way. Over at Niji's Fifth, they did one song on both days of the first weekend of the concert, and they were the only unit to perform on all four days of Nijigasaki's sixth live, which had two shows in 2023, and then another two in 2024. Also this year, along with every other subunit in the whole franchise, Rebirth performed at the unit Koshian Live, though Moipi wasn't there for day two. Outside of the franchise, like with Azuna, they were at the Bandai Namco Fest in day one of 2022, and that is definitely the only festival that they've ever been at, so far. These are the other potential names for the unit. I really like Baby Tune and even Glitter with a 3 instead of the E because there are three members. Violet Rose is also really cool, but it doesn't really fit their vibe or image. That could have been a really cool alternative for Guilty Kiss over in Aqua. And all I've been doing is praising the Niji subunits, but with these girls, I totally understand why they're called Rebirth, though I can't help but think the name only won because it was a popular YouTuber, Rin Taicho, who submitted it. Of course, being one of the three Niji groups named by a foreigner, though I do believe this makes the unit the only group in the whole franchise to be named by an English speaker. And if I'm being completely honest, why weren't they just called Monster Girls? It was their debut song, and in the opening lines, Mia literally says, we are the Monster Girls. I know Love Live has this little system that they use for deciding these, and Japan just has so many rules that they always feel the need to follow. So again, I get it, I don't hate the name, but Monster Girls would have been way better in my opinion. Anyway, some facts about this Seiyu. Rebirth is the only subunit in the franchise where all members are the same age. Well, there is Diver Diva, but they're only a duo, with all three of the Rebirth girls being born in 1996. Moika is technically the oldest, born in February. Shu is the middle child, born in May, and Akina the youngest, born in August. Akina is also the shortest, while Moipi is the tallest. Shu and Akina are in the same agency, and they share another fun fact having to do with foreign-related things. Akina being half Chinese, speaking some of both the languages over there. And Shu, I'm pretty sure, is fully Japanese, not half, born in Japan as well, but then she was raised in Sydney, Australia, having English as her first language. Though I'm sure she started learning Japanese like a day later. Can you imagine speaking your first words in English, then your parents are like, alright, time to learn Japanese. Anyway, yeah, all of them are from three different prefectures, if that wasn't obvious. Outside of the Love Live franchise, Shu is part of the Seiya unit I mentioned earlier, known as Prima Porta, with Fedo Niji's sister Mayu Sagara, and formerly Aguri. Moika needs to relax. She is in a duo seiyu unit with one of her best friends, Haruki Iwata, as well as Starlight Kukugumi, the leads for the Revy Starlight franchise, being in this group again with Haruki, and even Hinata Sato from Saint Snow, with both of them again with Moipi being in D4DJ. The Moipi is in the unit Peaky Peaky. And don't even get me started on her stage plays. This woman is a machine. As for Akina, out of the whole group, all 14 of them if you include Hinaki and Tomori, Homan is the only one not in another musical performance series or group. She's more of a gamer and livestreams a lot. So last up we have some lore. Rebirth is the first unit to reveal their debut song and music video before a unit name was even chosen. Lanzu is fluent in both Cantonese and Mandarin, while Mia is fluent in English. 
This makes Rebirth the first tetralingual unit, and like with Muse's Lily White and Aqua's Guilty Kiss, Rebirth is a unit that consists of members who are all in different school years. Also, like I said earlier in the anime, they never actually fully formed. Maybe it'll happen in the movie trilogy. And just to add another little personal opinion about the group, they really should have just been rivals rather than joining the group. I know Lonzo was technically a rival at first and she formed this whole association thing, but like in the end, she and the other two just became part of the main cast. Which I mean, they still could have done, but just as rivals. Big missed opportunity in my opinion. Let's move on to the characters. Mia is the shortest and youngest, while Lanzu is the tallest and oldest. And before you comment about Mia's age, just wait until her section. Actually, let's just start with her. Mia is indeed the youngest member of the group, despite being a third year, and I'm pretty sure she's the youngest character in the whole franchise. This is because she skipped some years of school. Actually, she attended a college back in America before coming to Japan and going to Niji Academy. Which leads nicely into the next point. She is a fluent English speaker like her Seiyu, but while Shu is Australian, Mia is American, specifically from New York, being the first main character in the franchise not to be born in Asia or Europe. Though due to Shu's natural accent, Mia does sound Australian. Bit of an odd choice there. Mia's songs sound very much like English pop songs of the early 2000s, and as for her personality, she is a very straightforward and competitive girl. To the point of declaring war on the player character, from the game, as a songwriter, out of the blue. But her confidence is just a facade, and she actually tends to feel insecure about her song's quality compared to the players. Last up for her, it wasn't really her idea to go to Niji Academy, but more her friend Alonzu dragging her over there, most likely to take over the idol scene at the school. Speaking of Lanzu, my favorite character design in the whole franchise, from an early age she was treated as a gifted girl with very many talents. This ended up giving her insecurity as people would always leave her due to the fact that she was treated as special and not equal among her peers. Despite being very competitive and somewhat arrogant in the anime, she doesn't appear as hostile or rude towards the club. I guess it's more of a friendly competition to her. She has a really cool fact that she is the first character in the franchise to sing a trilingual song in Mandarin, Japanese, and English. I'm pretty sure the LS Cuckoo has also done this since then, but I could be wrong. As I hinted earlier, Lanzu originally started off as like the main villain, in the game at least, to the point where people legitimately hated the character. And I'm sure that's why her and the other Rebirth girls didn't stay as rivals. Though it is implied that she came from Hong Kong, the way she speaks Nax is more reminiscent of mainland China. Even her songs are more like Mando Pop rather than Canto Pop. This could just be an oversight from the creators though. And lastly for her, her childhood best friend is none other than the next lady, Shioriko Mifune. Shioriko is the second daughter of the prestigious and wealthy Mifune family. Shoutouts to her older sister being voiced by Yoko Hikasa, by the way. In one of the game stories, Shioten actually challenges Setsuna for the position of student council president by initiating a re-election because she thought Setsuna wasn't doing a good job. Yikes. In the anime, she's still in the student council, but just a regular member, and rather than opposing the school idol club, she actually acts more neutral and even helps them out a little bit, and then joining them, of course. She is described as calm and academically gifted. She values Japanese tradition and has been trained in traditional dance and flower arrangement, honestly very similar to Shizuku. But Shioriko also has a talent for identifying people's strengths and weaknesses, and uses this to help the students at Nijigasaki High School succeed in their club activities by offering them advice. Which is very different from the game version, being very strict, cold, and even antagonistic. The last fact for her and the video is that Shioriko is the first school idol to join a group after it already had 9 members, Niji in general being the first group to have more than the standard 9 girls, which was a very different feeling at the time, and apparently she was already planned to join later before the group even debuted. So that's the ending for this one. Like last time, not really going to give any closing thoughts. I was already sharing my opinions a lot during this video. I'm assuming this one's going to be longer than the last one as my voice is completely gone. But here's hoping we see both of the units later in October for Nijigasaki's 7th Live. I hope you've enjoyed and learned something new. If so, please do leave a like and maybe watch another video of mine. You can even join me in the next one, which will actually be a remake of an older video because the group's cast has changed and they've released a fair amount of new stuff since then. As always, I look forward to seeing you there.